Uh, thank you. So Chi Rings was the name that I came up with for uh, a visualisation I created as part of a University of Edinburgh data visualisation course I did uh, back in 2021. Um, and my motivations for doing that course were that it was an opportunity to learn more about the data visualisation process and the design process. And also it was a deadline driven opportunity to use R because I'd been wanting to look at R for a long time and I'd never had the kind of the correct motivation. So having a deadline um, focuses the mind on that front. So I worked for a forestry consultancy and it was a bring your own data course. So I decided to use long-term or as planned data. Um, this is comprised of three main data sets. So the first one would be the current species data. So that's what's actually growing on the ground at the start of the plan. Um, and we would usually show that in terms of a map um, legendized by um, species. So in this map, you can see the green areas are Scots pine, the blue are Sitka spruce, uh, the red hatched areas are unplanted, so they've been felled. So, and that's all stored in our forestry database. Um, then the long-term forest plan layers would be the felling phases. So we use the standard um, Forestry Land Scotland um, shading for the felling phases. So the red is a, um, the first phase, each phase is five years and a long-term forest plan looks at a 20 year um, span. So the first phase is the red areas, they're all going to be felled in the next one to five years. The orange areas in um, five to 10 years, yellow um, is phase three and green is phase four. Anything that's blue is either too young to be considered within the scope of this forest plan or um, the light blue is long-term retention. So they're going to be kept for management reasons and, and not felled. So that's the felling phases and then the final layer is the restocking species and that's once an area has been felled and then it will need to be replanted. I should say this is commercial um, timber we're looking at here um, so there's a you have to restock with, um, with trees after you've felled it and then if you look at the current species and the restock species that would give you an overview of how the forest is going to change and evolve over the course of the forest plan. So those were the three data sets I wanted to look at. Um, and my idea was that I wanted to produce a single graphic, a single visualization that would encompass the um, character of the forest plan and of the forest. So at the moment we visualize these data and present these data as part of the forest plan as a suite of maps and charts and tables. Um, there's kind of like a dashboard of, of different graphics that we produce with this data. Um, and I wanted to really produce a, an image that would encapsulate all of that in an interactive way. So in addition to showing in a nice way, hopefully, how, how the data was, um, a user would also be able to quantitatively assess things. So it wouldn't kind of just be a pretty picture. Um, I was really inspired by circular images. Um, the image on the left there is a, a genome browser graphic i have absolutely no idea what the data is that, that is showing but i just think it, it looks like it's showing a lot of information there's a lot of data points a lot of uh, complex information on there and it's in a very attractive way so i i was really taken by the idea of a of a circular graphic um and then we had to do a, a data a design tutorial where we broke out the color in pencil so this was my um, initial sketch of what i wanted to show which was kind of like a exploded pie chart pizza thing. Um, so in the center there, I would have um, the current species and then a ring that would then show of that species area, how much of that's gonna be felled in each phase and then what's the restocking species gonna be. So that was my, my concept uh, diagram. So in terms of the data processing, um, initially the preliminary um, data cleaning and analysis I did in QGIS um, and Excel because although I wanted to learn how to use R, I, uh, I should say this is probably actually the most least technical R talk people hear because there's no code here. Um, I only had 12 weeks so there was a lot of the data processing and tidying up that I just had to do in QGIS and Excel. Um, but then the, the learning curve for me really was the, the actual creation of the visualization and the exploratory data analysis and just seeing how the data looked in different ways when you when you ran it through different functions. 
So this was a circular process, the results of me intersecting my data set and um, cleaning it up where the, basically one big polygon layer and the attributes of that that I wanted to look at were the current species, the felling phase, the restocking species, and then the area for each polygon. And I fed that into R, it was a CSV file, and just ran it through lots of different scripts and functions to create all these different graphics and hit upon um, sunbursts. So a sunburst a hierarchical, um, a hierarchical yeah. visualization. So if you've got a, a data set with different hierarchical levels, then you would have spokes that come out of the of the circle. But my data set, every polygon has got the same three hierarchical levels. So it's it comes out as a set of concentric rings. And in this, um, I've got a central ring, which is the current species. I've got a middle ring, which is the restocking, the felling phase. And then I've got an external ring, which is the restocking species. So that ticked a lot of the boxes um, in terms of how I wanted the data to look. And then when you click on things, if you click on a wedge, it highlights that wedge. And then this little tab pops up to show you um, the statistic, the, the percentage area for, for what you've clicked on. So there's a level of interaction with that. Um, and I did some user feedback with people on my course, but also with people at work. And the main thing that came back from that was that in order for this graphic to be in, intuitive and for somebody who's in forestry to be able to just look at it and think, oh, I can, I can see what's happening there, was I would need to use the legends from the maps, so the color coding that everyone's familiar with, um, and put that into the graphic. So that was my first big stack exchange win, was that somebody had asked that question and someone else had answered it. So I was able to plug the code in so I could define what the colors were for the species and for the felling phases. So that generated um, this version of it, um, which again, it was quite nice. You could still get some level of interaction and see things. And this meant it was from somebody in forestry, they could instantly look at that and say, well, this, this woodland um, is almost 50% Scots pine with a little bit of Sitka spruce. So you're able to glance at that and, and take things away from that without necessarily having to click on things. Um, the feedback on that was that it was great, uh, people liked it, but the, the outer ring, the restocking species ring, because it's um, increasingly segmented as you go out from the centre, it's quite hard to see the detail of that. So here I've clicked on Scots Pine, Felling Phase 1, and you can see s s uh, the percentage of Sitka spruce, which is going to be stocked, and there's tiny, so you can't really see the detail of the outer ring. So um, they got work for saying, well, could we maybe show that information as a separate side chart, or can we zoom in um, to show more detail? So the stack exchange big win number two was that yes, you can, you can do a zoomable sunburst, um, and it's probably better if I just actually go to that. So that's the final, the final um, image in this process was a plotly, um, it was in the plotly library in our studio and it's a, a sunburst function. And the, the main issue I had getting it into that format was, um, well, what does the data need to look like to go in, to feed into this function? And that was where the, the stack exchange win was. Somebody had um, posted that question and answered it. So I was able to incorporate that code with the color schemes to produce this final design. So if I click on this, hopefully it'll open the web page. So this was the final graphic I had. And the intra if you hover over these things, it shows you what the percentages are. So you can see you've got 43% um, of the forest of Scots Pine. And then if you click on that, it recenters it. And then you can see, well, of that Scots Pine, 1%, um, sorry, 3% is going to be in uh, phase one. And then the restocking species for that um, is going to be mainly Scots pine with a bit of sitka, some mixed conifer, and smoking ground and native broadleaf. So you're able to, um, by clicking and hovering over things, you're able to actually get quite a nice amount of detail um, from this. So uh, back to the PowerPoint. So that was great. Um, yeah, but the the feedback I had from that was that that was great, but what the foresters actually wanted to see was um, the before and after for the restocking species. So that involved jiggling the hierarchy around a bit so that felling phase was at the center of the image. And then um, 
the current species was the middle ring and then the restocking species was the outer ring. Um, and there was also a bit of contrast between what my classmates thought with regards to the colour schemes and what the forest managers thought. Um, the people in my course were saying you should use more modern colours and, and make it more muted. But then if I did that, the people at work were like, no, we want to see the colours that we're used to so that we can look at this and know immediately what's happening. So everyone was used to Scots pine is green, Sitka spruce is dark blue, European larch is orange, and those colours tied in. So the concession I made was that I made the felling phases a bit more pastel-y. Um, <laughs> that was the kind of compromise. But then, so this final image, so you can see phase one here, we've got um, the composition of the areas that will be felled in phase one. And then if I click on the larch, it's a good example, because this is data from the last forest plan we did. This one's coming up for renewal. So this was from 10 years ago. There wouldn't be any larch in that wedge anymore because of Dothoscroma. So you can interrogate this and look at different things. I mean, somebody could could um, click on that and, and see that larch and think, oh, well, I'm going to look into that and figure out where that is so that um, we can remove that. Um, and yeah, the feedback we've had from this has been really nice. Everyone says it's it's interesting. I think um, in terms of my future um, goals, I would think that I, I would want to do more of this process within R. So I did some of the initial processing in QGIS, and ideally I was really hoping to have a process that I could press a button, and um, select the three layers that I needed to look at, and then run that to generate this graphic. Um, also dealing with the species mixes in that graphic, there was quite a big wedge of um, light green, which is mixed conifer, um, which was my compromise in terms of where we've got areas that are intimate mixes of lots of different species. I'd need to split those out on the percentages and use that to, um, in some sort of script that in somehow. Um, and then also it would be great if I could make this part of a dashboard so that um, when somebody was looking to make a forest plan, they clicked on a button and then this image came up as maybe the steering wheel for all the other um, charts and graphs that we usually produce. And if it linked into the geometry, so you could click on a bit of a wedge, a bit of the, the, the sunburst, and then that flashed up on the map, that would be splendid. But those are all things that I didn't have the time to do with this. And I think I probably ran through that quite quickly, but um, yeah, that's me, thank you. Um, I think we have some time for two, three questions, if there are any, for both of the speakers. Essentially, talking to certain people 
suffer up to a set of losses. All right. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no worries. Are there any other questions? Yep. Sure. Okay. Our forestry database is based on um, aerial surveys that are then uh, ground traced by the forester. So we would do an initial kind of stratification based on what you can see in the photographs. And then, what about yeah, well, we've got there's a there's people based in Inverness who do aerial photography from a fixed wind plane. So um, some kind of standard aerial photography. Uh, a lot of the data sets that we are working with have been established now for over 20 years. So um, someone else has, has done the digitizing and, and done all that. And then my job is to keep that up to date. And so when things are felled or when things are replanted, then somebody goes out. And we, we tend to use phones now for GPS because that level of accuracy, we, just, we don't need like centimeter precision accuracy for you know, where the trees stop and start. Um, so someone will go out and they'll, they'll, um, measure the boundaries when something's been replanted and then I'll update the data back to the GPS data. But initially most of them are based on the property surveys. So you're not going to use trees, what three words locations for No, we do use what three words for the harvesting sites. For, um, that's one of the kind of operational things for the contractors road site. They obviously have to be able uh, if something happens with the emergency services, a very quick reference for where they are. So, I mean, and joking aside, for, for in your middle of a forest, what three words is a pretty good way of, of saying that. But, um, and I have been asked to convert what three words points into into maps for other other things, not for the forest, but for some other work to do. But, um, but yeah. And then, so following that, it's quite tough about all that. So, um, adding in tree health and in terms of when people are assessing forests from the sky and from the ground, sort of how there be plans to sort of enhance that potentially to include. Yeah, so that's a big thing that we're interested in in terms of at the moment to assess tree health, someone has to go out and, and do like a physical walk around it. And that's how we would, before you harvest anything, you have to obviously have a measure of what the value of that crop is going to be to help your trees. But also with all the different tree different things. But I think. 
we are not doing much of that at the moment, but in terms of using either drone imagery or satellite imagery to automatically detect those things, then we have a lot of work going on. Yeah, I can really see how like, a tool like that can be used as a great visualization aspect for that was the thing when I did this, when I did this, it showed the guys at work, they were just like, oh, there's so many different, like, we could use it for this or that. There's so many different applications to that. Could be